Hello everyone, this is the day 14 of the admin training. In this day, we will talk about that application scope. So in this day, basically we will talk about that what is the application scope, what is the global application, what is the scope application. So let's get started. So when service now designed initially, there was only one scope that is called global. So when service now created their application, the first thing is it was the global application. And under this global application, it came under incident, problem, change request all these modules that we can see right now all are how we call as a global application now they and let's say that this is a global application is huge application right and then all our service now design everything script include client script all under fall under this global application so there is a one thing called the scope application this scope application is nothing but for example example vulnerability response so this is a another uh, you know scoped application so what is the scope application so service now owns the this is a global application this global application is a huge functionality incident problem change everything is present under this uh, you know uh, global application now you can uh, directly install or you can create your own scoped application for extra functionality like for example this is our android application or android os right for example android os and in that you can install some application called zoom right so this is a another application called zoom so this is we call the scope application so service now first have that uh, you know global application and under the globe uh, under the global application if you think that if you want to install something uh, additional then you can use the scoped application so this is a scoped application when we uh, install the Zoom, right, uh, we probably need some of the access in the system. For example, um, user information, mic permission, all this. So similarly, when you install a scope application, you can take some um, input from the global, um, you know, for example, user information, you can take that. You can take some CMDB CI information from the global application. But this global application and the scope application, both are separated they don't share they are uh, this is isolated this application is totally isolated so normally this from the global application we can get some basic information like user information and cmd information but it did not interact or it did not do any operation on to that global application they can read some basic information but did not i know interact that so let's see furthermore on that global application and scope application so if you see the scope application, this scoped application is like a, I mean, install basis. So if you see, these are the features in the scope application. Scope application should be uninstalled. So you can just install and uninstall. App should not break the system. So we have a uh, service now instance and that's mainly or majorly in the global application. But when you install any scope application, that should not break the global functionality or should not break anything under this global scope or anything under system. So you install a Zoom application, only the purpose of this one, so you can just do meeting, but you cannot interfere with this, all these, your Android application. Similarly, uh, you know, when you install any scope application, that scope application should not break anything under global. App should not break other applications. So similarly, Zoom application, there or uh, one scope application, there could be many scope application, right? So this application should not break this application. So this is, has to, this has to be, taken care of that and here you can see that app should be self-contained it means that whatever is needed everything should be present under this application so you should write the code such a way that it should not interact or should not break other application so this is basically uh, we call the scope application so we are going to create a scope application right now but let's understand a few more things so remember that we created a local update set, right? And this local update set, we captured these, all these details like uh, rules. We, we can capture the business rule. We can capture the client script or maybe table creation. Everything we can capture through the update set, right? Similarly, uh, for scope application, uh, even if you don't, because it's a, a compact application, right? So you're building an application like a package, right? So you might not need to be create the update set. Um, you know, you can directly push your application to the Git repository and from the Git repository, you can push to the other environment. Let's understand. So let's say that you are building an application. So this is our my application called Zoom call or library application. So in this application, we are developing. Once our development completed, we can push this application to this uh, Git repository. So this application can be pushed to the Git repository. Once our development done, 
we can from the git we can directly install this application to the test environment and then tester completed their testing they find some bug so again we can push this code to that git repository and git repository to we can again push to the test environment right and then tester completed their testing and then they sign on okay this is working as expected then from this git we can directly install this application to the production previously what we used to do in the global application we can move our update set from development to test test to production like that we are moving that update set but for scope application we can directly move this code to the source repository and source from the source repository we can just install this application to test and then production in case anything broken in case if you don't like this application you can simply uninstall that application you have a button called uninstall you can simply uninstall that application so this is like a uh, you know small set of uh, application that you can design for your own purpose like uh, in the ITSM service now provided already that incident problem change right but why suddenly need this scope application in ITSM model we have the incident problem change uh, knowledge article request management but why suddenly need the scope application for example you are building a library application right so service now does not provide the library application for library application or for maintaining the book maintaining the publisher information all these stuffs you can create your own scope application and that scope application will be an add-on to this um, you know your instance and if, whenever you need it you can install to the upper environment you can uninstall it does not actually interact with your ITSM service no module so that's it right so let's build our um, scope application in our environment so this is the service now uh, demo instance here uh, previously we created a table right so we created a table called uh, book right and this uh, basically store the book information right but I want to actually do a library management so that's the reason I should not use this in global application so if I go to the tables module right so I will go to the tables module here and then I created that uh, book application from here right clicking the new button I was able to create that book table right similarly if I find out that book table I'll just simply open this book table you can see the application is global it means that this is the this is created on the global application now today first we'll understand that how we can create a scoped application and then how we can create the tables under scope application so basically once your table is created you cannot change the table name you cannot move from global application to the another application or you cannot do any movement you can delete some of the fields you can delete these fields but you cannot actually rename the table name you cannot uh, you know move that scope from global to any other so first we'll understand how we can create the scope application to creating the scope application we have a tool called studio you can go to the studio and create your uh, you know scope application so we we'll go to the studio once you click the studio module here you will be able to find out that all the scoped applications so far are present to this environment and you can see these all are the scope application here okay so these are the scope application so if you see that the application name is the employee profile and then under that it have a unique name like asin underscore employee something like that and each application have a some version you can see this version is 6.1.5 it means that this version is I mean this is the latest version of 6.1.5 so each application can have several version uh, and then that can be you know upgraded the new version can be added okay so we can simply create our own application when you are creating the application your own application it will be start with the X underscore then this will be your company name and then your application name so this company name is defined under your company profile so you cannot change the company name so this question can be come in your CSA exam or CAD exam like how this uh, you know application scope name is defined so normally application scope is defined x underscore then company code and then your application name this company code cannot be changes and it is dedicatedly when you so let's say that you work for ABC company so it will be x underscore ABC and that 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 code will be provided by service though so I am using the demo instance then that's the reason they have provided some demo company code for me so if you want to create a simply app custom application you can click the create application once you click the create application there will be a 
uh, several options which type of application you can build. So you can build the mobile application, you can build the desktop application, you can build, uh, you know, workspace application. You need to be selected which type of application you want to build. You can see here it have a options called enter the app name and the bottom you have to be the scope name will be automatically generated. This is the option that by default if you want to build the scope application, this checkbox has to be checked. The scope has to be checked. Before I create this application, if you see here right now my application is showing right now global. But when we create an application, my application will be changing. So let's say that I'm going to create a library management application. So I will say that library. So this is my application name called library management and if you see the scroll down the, the scope name is automatically generated x underscore company code and this is the you know scope name. I can a uh, little bit change that so I can put this um, like that but this I cannot remove that okay so this x if I try to remove that it will give me an error that it should be start with this one. So this is my company code and I have to be put this on so you cannot remove this scope name. The scope name will be x underscore your company code. After that you can put any kind of, uh, there is a uh, maximum character, you can put this any kind of name. So this is the backend name and this is the uh, you know label of this application. You can click this create button. Once you click the create button, it will asking for that role. So if you want to create a new role for this application, normally you create a new app, uh, roles for this application. You can do that. So let's say that I will put that admin, something called that admin rule. You can see the new role name also came up like x underscore 2652 underscore library management dot admin. So every object will be created with the scope name and then their label. Now go to the continue mode. So I'm just doing or creating a only one role that is called admin role and then click continue. Now here we need to be select that which type of application we want to build. We are building the mobile application or classic application. Mobile application means that which application will be only accessible from service now mobile app. So for the timing I am selecting the classic then continue. Now we have to be select the table name. So if we want to create a new table or if we want to use the existing table. You can see there are a lot of um, existing table is present and we can select any of this table CMDB user table all this information we can select that. Um, so if we are selecting that it means that we are going to be access those table but make sure that whenever you are building an application you should not modify or you should not hamper the global application. So these all are actually mostly are the global table, global table so you should not modify, we should not do any uh, alternate of this one. So normally you can read the information right. So you can select that. So I am going to create a new table so I will click the create new table. Now when you are creating a table, we have a several option. If we want to create the table from that uh, Excel sheet or if you want to extend, maybe we can extend the task table if we want, maybe CMDB, CI table we, if we want, we can do that. Or maybe if you want to create a table from the scratch, you can do that. So I'll click the create from the scratch and then continue. So it means that I'm going to create a new table. Let's say I'll create the same table. So I will create the book table. So previously I created the book table into the global scope. Now I'll create the book table into the scope application and I'll show you the what is the difference. So I'm going to create a book table underscore application. Okay. So book table and there will be a couple of fields. Let's say for the timing I am going to put that call um, ASN serial number and this is I'll put the string and character is 40 and continue. Rest of the field I can create later and if I have information I can do right now. So I'll say that author. I will do some of the fields because we already created those fields and then we will select the reference and then we have to select the reference table called user. So we will select the user and later if you want to create as many as fields you can do that. Okay, So you can do this step later also. I will do continue. Now here I need to put my table name. Previously if you remember that when I created the table book table into the scope application right book table I created into the scope application backend name was u underscore book right. Now here if you create the table name equal to book what will be happen the table backend name will be x underscore 2652 because this is the scope name then it will come the table name. So backend name will be little difference. So what is the backend name? So scope application the backend name will be the scope name scope name underscore the table level. So we can put that uh, you know 
scope name and then table label. So here it's like that. This scope name underscore book. This is the backend name. Now here we have the options called auto number. Previously remember we created a field called number. Similarly we can create a number called uh, you know here also I will say that be okay. Now here if you remember that in previously we have a checkbox. If you remember we have a checkbox called here the global scope we have a checkbox called create access control and we put the ITN. Similar thing we can do that we can go to this manage access and under this manage access we can uh, select this role and if you remember so I have created this admin role right so I am giving that admin role to create read write. Also we can add another role for example I can select this ITIL role so ITIL will have create read write role so this way we can uh, you know manage this access and then let's if you don't want to you can just simply remove that so right now I am giving permission to the ITIL to do create read write on this table now let's continue that once you continue it will take some time because this table is created right now once your table is created you can see this is the table which is created from the scratch how many fields we have and if you want to add some data um, you can do that so I'll do that continue now now so far we have created one table book if you want to create many more table you can again click the create new table and create that so I'm not going to create anything else I'll do the done with table then here we have an option called start I'll click the start once we start that you can see this is our application name so this is the library management application here I have not put any description this is the table this is the role I have created and here I can select this ITL role because we are going to operate with the ITL and then continue create click the done with the apps so once you do, click the done with apps here you can you can create the notification you can change the policy you can change the layout report all these stuffs I'll not going to change anything I'll click simply done so once you click the done it means that this application is ready and you can see right now the new application for library management is available the version is 1.0.0 and this is created time this is updated time and you can see this is the scope name backend name and see this scope name is x underscore my company name underscore library management whatever I have selected now I can select this application once I select this application whatever files we have created so far we have created a tables we have created roles these are the access control this is the application menu created these are the module created all are showing right now in our left side now let's go back to this um, you know normal window this is the normal window I have shown you earlier and this is the studio mode once your application is created you can build or you can design everything from this normal window as well as from the studio I'll come to that studio part later but let's compare with the global application and the scope application if I refresh here so this is our service now instance here if I refresh that you will be able to see my current scope is right now it changed to that uh, library management if I click here my current scope is a library management you can see this is the current application scope and then update set is a default and bracket library management right it means that when you create an application there will be a one default update set will be always created so there could be a CSA question or maybe CAD question came up like when you create a new application what should be the default update set name the default update set name name is the default and then there could be only one default update set for per application so this library application library management have a default application called default we have a global application and we can change this you can see these are the application right now so these are the different different kind of application and this application can be either scope application and the global application scope application should not interact with the global application so you can select the global application or we can select our application that we have created library management system you can select that so this is the library management system so here in the left side let's search with the library management system so we have created right so if I search that you can see that there is a one application created for library management under that one module created called book under that we have two module created called create and create new and all if you click all here it will go to this book module you can see this is the book module uh, that book table we have created and if you see in the top the backend name is this is the backend name of this table uh, if you click 
this button it will go to this form where we can create a new record see this is the new record now i will open the book table that we have created into the scope app, um, global application this books table we have created into that global application when we created that uh, book table into the global application it have an application it have a, uh, a module and if i open this right so it have a uh, you know table record and similarly here it have a table record so both are pre, uh, pretty much same but if you see this book table or books table the back end name is like uh, scoped underscore this table name but here the back end name is u underscore books so you denote that global application global custom table this is denote that global and then custom table and this is denote that it's a scoped custom table okay so this way we can identify that this is the global table and this is the scoped table now here if you see the little difference so when we create a new record into the scope application all the field name right number author serial number they don't start with u underscore if i right click and then show you can see they don't start with that so they don't start with u underscore so it is like sn right similarly if i right click and the number it is showing the number right but in our uh, global scope this table field name are started with u underscore book underscore title because this is the global scope so this is little difference now question is that how can we know that how many application or scope application created for this organization how we can know that so if you go back to the studio under the studio if you go to this file and then here we have a switch if you click the switch you will have these options called select application and you can select the application right but simply if you if you type your uh, you know organization name x underscore and you will be able to find out all this custom scope application that you have for your organization so these all are custom application there are some of the application like sn uh, employee sn sc common or so these are the scope application but that is built by service now so if you type x underscore then you will be able to find out that all the scope application that the custom application that's the you have built and if you see these are the normally total 13 or these are the applications are either either created by service now or installed from the store now there is a, a table if you type that sys underscore app dot list under this table you will be able to find out all this custom application that is created so sys underscore app is the table where you will be able to find out that all the custom application that we have created so this library management i have created previously there was one more uh, application called content creator i have created so these two custom application i have created the scope custom application i have created and their scope name is showing right now now this way we can find out that all this custom application or the scoped custom application. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day.